In the winter of 1811 and 1812, the great New Madrid earthquakes uncovered a terrible crime involving a young slave and his master. This crime involved a grisly murder and the downfall of a great American icon's relatives. In Albemarle County, uh, Virginia, the home of Thomas Jefferson and, and his at Monticello, his family had married into the uh, Lewis family, had lived there for generations. They were aristocrats in the, in the old style. Uh, they were heavy drinkers. They owned the bulk of their uh, property was in the form of slavery and land. This was the time when, when uh, slavery was, was fully accepted and the whole social order was based on it. The family, the Lewis family, was, consisted of the, the father and Thomas Jefferson's uh, sister, whom he had married. And they had several grown children, two sons, or three sons. In 1809, two of the sons, Lilburn and Isham Lewis, moved to Rocky Hill Plantation in western Kentucky, near the mouth of the Cumberland River. From 1809 to 1811, Lewis's family had suffered tragedy and heartbreak due to flawed business and community activities. Lilburn's marriage also suffered while his wife was eight months pregnant with their very first child. Lilburn felt stressed and couldn't concentrate on any of his work. In 1811, he began to drink heavily and would become abusive to his slaves. Lilburn owned a family plantation on which he had many slaves and laborers. One of the family slaves, George, was 17 years old and often found himself in trouble. Because of his hard life, George had many thoughts of escaping. George had heard one night when he was going to bed that the Livingston County patrollers were discharged and were not patrolling the banks of the Ohio River, which was the only thing separating him from freedom. When George was working down by the river one day, he gathered up the strength and decided to take his chances and make a run for freedom. Two days later, George was caught and returned to Rocky Hill. Later, George was once again sent down to fetch water from a spring on Rocky Hill. When George bent down to get the water, he heard Lilburn yell his name. He dropped the vase and he broke it. And they sent George, one of the slave boys, a, a, teen, a young teenager, sent him down the hill to the well to bring them some water one night. And the, the two older sons were, had been drinking. And the, the slave boy dropped the pitcher and it broke and shattered into the, uh, into the spring. And when the, then when he'd seen what he had done, he, uh, he skedaddled because he knew he was in big trouble. With drunken rage, Lilburn and Isham, who was Lilburn's brother, dragged George into the kitchen and bound him on the floor securely. They next assembled the slaves and had them build up a fire in the fireplace. And Lilburn bolted the door shut and told the slaves he was going to teach them a lesson about disobeying his orders. It was late in the night on December 15, 1811. Lilburn picked up an axe, claiming to teach the slaves a lesson, and with a two-handed single swing of it, he cut right into George's neck. The contact from the blade killed George instantly. After seeing that he was dead, he ordered one of his slaves to take the axe and then dismember the parts from the body. After the slave dismembered George's body, they threw the pieces into the fireplace. The flames of the fire were to burn away any evidence of memory of George's life. After the body was thrown into the flames, Lilburn told his slaves that if they told anyone of George's death, they would receive that same fatal treatment. Lilburn uh, lectured the slaves on the behavior of being sloppy and careless and said that this was what would happen to you uh, if you did something like this again. While Lilburn and Isham thought the evidence would be burned away by fire, they were soon proven wrong. The first in a series of cataclysmic earthquakes would rock the entire Mississippi and Ohio River valleys. On the very same night, scientist John Bradbury was headed down the Mississippi River with a party of boatmen on the New Orleans. They were anchored for the night near Chickasaw Bluffs, which is Memphis today. The next morning, he was awakened from a dead sleep by the most tremendous noise he had ever heard. He later described the noise as all of nature running into chaos. 
trees snapped, wild animals fled, and the riverbanks collapsed down into the water itself. For Bradbury, there was a long moment of awe as he feared for his life. Eliza Bryan recorded the scene just 80 miles away in New Madrid, Missouri. Eliza Bryan was awakened by the series of shocks. The sound resembled thunder, and the room vibrated with intensity. Objects started falling to the floor, and the roof looked as if it would soon follow. The noise was unbearable. Because of the magnitude of the quake, it was difficult to tell what was actually happening. The shocks lasted until sunrise, deafening the people of the town. The 400 residents were out in the streets for hours, trying to avoid the danger within their homes. New Madrid was in panic. The earthquake destroyed the fireplace the slave George was placed into. With the current happening, Lilburn didn't even think about George's body. That morning, as many other tremors took place, a dog that belonged to a neighbor found the fireplace and took George's skull. The dog took the skull home, but when the owner saw what the dog had found, he took it to the sheriff. Word spread throughout the county that it had been one of Lilburn's slaves since they noticed that George had gone missing. When the boys got drunk again and decided that they were not didn't have much of a chance, and they prevailed upon each other to form a suicide pact. The, um, they went to the grave of their mother, which was on a hill nearby, and they agreed to present a, uh, a gun at each other's breast and had a word, fire. Well, they had flintlocks, and the younger brother, Isham, said to Lilburn, what happens if the... Uh, if the gun misfires, Lilburn said, well, here, hand, hand me your, your, your flintlock. And he said, rest the, rest the butt on the ground and hand me that switch over there. And he handed him a switch. And he said, you simply put the gun right here at your breast and uh, touch the trigger with a switch and it'll go off. And he slipped and hit the trigger. And it did go off, and it shot him, and he dropped dead. Well, the younger brother decided that he didn't want any part of that. And he, uh, he ran away, but was captured in a few days. And they kept him in jail until shortly before the uh, judge was to come. And somebody turned him loose, or he escaped, and he ran away down to Mississippi. And he lived there, and I think married, and then was uh, uh, killed in the Battle of New Orleans. With the death of Lilburn Lewis, a dreadful story of murder and the fall of a well-connected American family came to an end. In the nearly 200 years since 1812, the landmarks and evidence associated with the crime and of the series of great earthquakes has faded away, but the legend of that tragic winter endures.